Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makes our broadcast today. John Lee, the mayor of North Las Vegas, running for governor, here for the whole show on all new Nevada Newsmakers. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails in large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Do you play golf? The Optimist Club of Reno is hosting the inaugural Ray Pezzanella Memorial Charity Golf Tournament on June 3rd at the Lake Course at Red Hawk Golf and Resort. For more information, go to pezgolf.org. Funds raised go to benefit local children's programs. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are pleased to welcome back to the program Mayor John Lee of North Las Vegas, running for governor. Pleasure to have you back, sir. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Beautiful morning down here in Southern Nevada. All right, so tell me, what are people telling you on the campaign trail? What's the hottest topics? Um, I think the hottest topic is inflation. Without a doubt, more people are concerned about the mileage they're getting, you know, in their, on their fuel. Um, I, for one, can afford, I guess, a, another little tack on the fuel. I'm all right. I don't have a lot of children at home now. But I can tell you, I drive my wife's car everywhere I go instead of my big, you know, my big Chevy truck, you know. So I'm, I'm very cognizant of what's happening with inflation. What we've done in North Las Vegas, though, is we look for ways that we could establish a, something to help our residents. So we looked around the systems and we were able to cut our sewer rates for our residential um, in, uh, residential uh, residents 30%. So we're doing what we can in North Las Vegas to help offset some of those high costs that are going on right now. Um, do you think that it's, it's prudent um, for government to cut um, expenses in places where they actually need the money, like sewer, for example, because that money goes towards very needed uh, services, um, as against uh, uh, letting the public really deal with the reality of the inflation. I mean, on the federal level, we've opened up the oil reserves, but that's really a political statement more than it is actual relief for the public. Yeah. So, Sam, I, I know what you're saying there, but I can tell you that... Um you're not supposed to make money on your sewer and your water to your residents. It's not a profit making system for the, for the city. And so we had personally bought a lot of stuff. We knew things were going to be uh, very hard to get in the future. And so we've got enough stock on supply. We're doing well. We can reduce our rates for a period of time to help ease this. Um, but I, you know, I do, I do understand you should not just look at the expenditure sides of your business. You need to look at the revenue side also. So we're very, we're very good at what we do in North Las Vegas, but we do work for our residents and we assist them wherever we can. Um, as you travel around, and especially as you've been traveling around uh, rural Nevada and northern Nevada, um, these areas are booming. The, the Reno Sparks unemployment rate is just over 2%. 
Um, how much economic development can an area take when the housing shortage is as great as it is? That's, that's the market issue. There's no doubt about that. We, if we're not careful, we're going to be exporting our children out of Washoe and Clark County and moving them to hopefully Nevada rurals, but maybe other states where they have a better opportunity to get home ownership. It is definitely something that we need to be cognizant about. But then again, we are trying to diversify our economies and get away from gaming, tourism, and hospitality. So it's it's kind of you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You, you know, we need to strengthen the state. We need to diversify our economy. We need to get more BLM land available in Southern Nevada. We need to put, you know, some res reservations on some of that land and get that land opened up um, for future residential. Um, where do you see the lands bills at this point? I mean, I was just talking to a, a reporter uh, from the Fernley Reporter. He's actually the, the editor and publisher. And, and he was saying that uh, the Fernley lands bill at this point is going nowhere. Um, are, are you getting positive um, feedback on what's happening with the Clark County lands bill? We're, it's moving probably at the same snail's pace that it does. But one thing you always have to be careful with lands bills, if you go and get too much land, then the people who own the land already are going to, their, their prices are going to be deflated because now there's so much land on the market. So there is quite a balance that does take place with residential and industrial and commercial. Um, I, I recognize that we have got lands bills sometimes where we're tied to military expenditure bills and stuff like that. There's, there's more than just one way to get a lands bill through Congress. You just have to have people who, and, that are elected who want to do their job and start pushing things rather than maybe considering their reelection so much as some of the things that take place that, to you know, kind of get their mind off their business of doing business for Nevada and more about the business of getting reelected. I think we should be pushing right now with our congressional team to get these lands bills moving. All right, so that brings up an interesting question, um, which is um, you now have a race between Mark Amaday and Danny Tarkanian for CD2. Uh, the congressman who's currently holding that office, Mark Amaday, has been there for many years and is now poised, if the Republicans take the House, to be in a position of power. What do you make of, of Danny taking a run at him? Well, truthfully, I like them both. They're very, very kind to me. They're very nice to me. And uh, we have a very polite relationship. Danny must think that more can be done for Nevada. And Mark has to continue to prove that he is providing for Nevada. You know, it's just a matter of, uh, who gets their information out there right now? I don't. Um, I don't know a reason why either one of them wouldn't be great in Washington, but you know, it's just a matter of that. It's a hotly contested seat right now. Um, I don't know what the temperature up there is for uh, Congressman Amade or Danny, but it is an interesting race to watch. I guess from a, a lands bill perspective, it would be the power that you have having been in Congress for about 11 years versus being Congressman number 435. Well, the thing that Mark has against him is he's got Pelosi in there right now. She probably would not want him to be successful. So therefore, she might do everything she can to make sure that um, he, with his leadership and experience, that he might be a seat that the Democrats would want to you know, get a new freshman in there. So there's always the political thing. That's why I wouldn't run for Congress. I'm just more of an executive than I am just a, a member of 135 in the House. Um, it's, you just, it's just not conducive for, for proper governance of a state to be in those positions if you can't get on the right committees and if you don't have your team in power. All right, so let's change topics on you. Uh, the gaming numbers have been stunning, over a billion dollars a month now for a year. What do you make of that, and what do you think uh, is the potential for that to keep going? You know, I, I've never, Sam, I don't gamble. You know what I mean? I don't know anything about it. I don't watch it, and I don't care about it. But there is well, right now a tendency for people just to bet on everything. And I think Nevada is trying to keep ahead of what's going on in the rest of the world as they're trying to keep up with Nevada. I don't know um, how much disposable income there is out there right now in the country, but it is be basically being put into the, the fun and excitement of what we're doing in Las Vegas with gambling. Uh, it continued. I hope it happens. You know, there's things that we need to fix in Nevada that we need revenues for, education being one of them, um, transportation is you know, another one. Uh, we need better health care in the state, you know, and we need 
we need, we need good jobs here. So the more money we get, the more money we can apply towards it that would benefit our state. I'm, 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 I'm for it. Um, were you surprised uh, to hear the news about potentially another stadium uh, around uh, 20,000 uh, seater uh, going up near Silverton in addition to Allegiant? I kind of am. I think that um, I think the best place for that be would be in North Las Vegas, of course, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised they took the second best place, though. But it's, it's interesting how... Um, California is just losing so much. I mean, I don't know if they can if they can understand what their state's going to look like in 10 years if they keep losing like this. You know, if you're looking forward, California is going to be in very, very bad shape. And uh, and they're losing all the things that people value about living out there. They're keeping the good weather, but everything else is, is leaving and looking for a new home. All right. So you mentioned transportation as one of the uh, things that uh, we need funding for. Um, what particular things would you like to see um, you know, coming out of the money that we, we're receiving from the federal government for infrastructure. Yeah, well, in, in our community of sorts, we have the Speedway way out at the end of the 15. And we have, uh, I was just with a, a group of people from the Electric Daisy Concert Company, and we're trying to manage the traffic flow. So we're going to be putting on an extra lane on both, so this NDOT's going to be helping us put on an extra lane on the I-15 going to and from. But we've got so much work going out in Apex right now. 10 years from now, it will be as busy between Lake Mead and uh, where the 215 intersect as it was between the old Sahara and Charleston before they fixed up the I-15. So transportation is going to be is going to be a very, very big issue for the next governor. If he doesn't get ahead of it um, and work and start being more proactive about seeing what the next 10 years look like, we'll be way behind for a long time. You know, it seemed to me, uh, we had the NDOT director on the program a couple of months back, and she was talking about, um, you know, basically revitalizing things that already existed rather than new projects. Um, sounds to me like you're more interested in, uh, in new projects as well as revitalizing things. Well, no, I'm just trying to say this is where things are happening. You better be prepared for it. You need to realize that this traffic count will be coming. And it takes a period of time with right of ways and, you know, and federal government and stuff like that sometimes to get these projects going. We... We just need to make sure we don't just sit back and say we've arrived because with the many amount of people coming up in your area, there's obviously situations up there that, that probably need up. I know that um, like where you go to the Sparks turn off or, you know, you, in that area that they're getting a lot of work done up there, which is very smart. So, no, it's just always an engaging process to consider what to think and prepare for in the future. Um, Apex, um, finally, and you've been working on this for years, but your predecessors were working on this as well. It looks like finally services are going out there and this park will really take shape. Um, I remember when uh, Roger Norman and Lance Gilman uh, put together the Tajarino Industrial Center. Um, the first press I saw on that was 1998. And they said it probably wasn't going to get done in their lifetime. Um, and I've jokingly said that um, uh, real life made them liars because it did get done well within both of their lifetimes, thank goodness. Um, how long do you think um, it's going to be for a build-out process, uh, realistically, for Apex? Is it a 20 to 30-year project? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of land out there. But uh, let me just go back to Lance and uh, uh, Mr. Norman again. They Roger. Were very oh. I remember them, Roger, coming in in 1998 to the legislature and explaining about this, and it really... It looked like pie in the sky to us in the legislature, but they knew exactly what they were doing. They, they, the pulse was there. They were brilliant. They, they did great things for that area. We've also done the same thing in the Apex. So we, there'll be 30,000 people out there working when this thing gets built. It will change the whole dynamic of Nevada. We will be gaming tourism and hospitality, but we will be manufacturing and heavy and light manufacturing also. So we are changing. Um, you know, you can go to Texas with your company and Everybody wants to threaten it. But when I talk to people about Texas, I say, but just remember one thing, the weather is horrible in Texas. You never know what you're going to get with the tornadoes and, and the, the cold and the snaps and all that weather snaps and all that kind of stuff. Nevada is the perfect place for all this to take place. And um, the sewer lines, water lines are going to be up there. I would say in, in five years, you should see the dramatic build out starting up there. Um, but along the way, while the water line and power lines going up, We've already got five industrial parks chasing that water line right now that's already in place on phase one. So the, the business world isn't waiting for Apex. It's moving its direction towards Apex.
Um, are, are you, do you think that there's going to end up being big competition between what's happening uh, south on the I-15 uh, towards Gene, uh, competing with what's happening in North Las Vegas? Because our good friend Par Tolls, one of our sponsors, just bought 140 acres down there. And uh, there's a lot of excitement about the potential for that. Well, I think it's great. I think it's both. I think it, we have the opportunity uh, out there at Prim, Nevada. Somebody just bought that casino. They're going to level that down and they're going to put some stuff out there. So the world is coming. You know, we're, we're preparing for it. And uh, I, I want all of the, the, the governments in Nevada to, to flourish. You know, I'm very excited about every community having somewhere that they can raise the wages of the people that live within their community. Um, do you think that we should be going vertical in our cities in Southern Nevada? You know, I, yes, I think downtown Las Vegas is, is probably where that would be, actually work the best until, uh, but I don't see it out in the, in, we'll call it the hinterlands, out, you know, four miles away from the downtown area. I, I just don't think that um, vertical allows in manufacturing to really do well. You can go up to three floors if you have robotics and stuff like that, you know, like, Amazon does, but actually um, you, you get farther away from the product and the machinery when you're on the second, third floor, what's this we know the producing. But what do you think about, you know, for example, Tesla, um, their gigafactory, um, the, the forecast is the eventual size of that is 16 million square feet. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I've never been one to say that it wasn't possible. And I thought that Mr. Musk was, you know, one of those brilliant people that if he could just get enough support he might be able to accomplish that well he's gotten the support and he's proven it and now i think that um the world's paying attention to what he predicted 15 years ago 10 years ago yeah it's pretty amazing all right let's take a break much more with the mayor of north las vegas running for governor john lee after this time out retail's impact on nevada's economy enormous 8,600 businesses large and small employing 145,000 workers and last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we would practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Do you play golf? The Optimist Club of Reno is hosting the inaugural Ray Pezzanella Memorial Charity Golf Tournament on June 3rd at the Lake Course at Red Hawk Golf and Resort. For more information, go to pezgolf.org. Funds raised go to benefit local children's programs. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with John Lee. He is the mayor of North Las Vegas, and he is running for governor. Um, you mentioned the Electric Daisy Carnival, uh, which is great that you mentioned that. It's out of the speedway there in uh, North Las Vegas. It's huge. For people that don't know, it is a rave that attracts 350,000 people over three nights. And uh, it, it's, it's just amazing. Um, Rick Vallotta wrote a column uh, about a year ago and said that maybe casinos should look at the Electric Daisy Carnival and bring some of those kind of attractions into casinos to make them more modern. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I know we did the uh, NBA All-Star Game. We brought in a lot of young people to Las Vegas, and it was just a disaster. We would never want to have another NBA All-Star Game. But these people who come to this event, I mean, they'll spend $1,500, $2,000, you know, in those three days. I mean, they, they're 
this disposable income. They like it. They come. And there's a sense of serenity that happens when all those people get together. They just kind of come together as we're the, we're the future. We're, we need to get along. We need to enjoy life and, and enjoy music and enjoy each other's company and, you know, have nothing dissimilar among us. And so they, we don't get very many issues. We don't have a lot of speeders. We don't have a lot of drunk people going down the road. We don't seem to have a lot of marijuana and issues like that. They do a good job at EDC. And uh, we, we'd like them to come back every year. We think they're a great asset to our community. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I think a lot of those things that you mentioned that you're not having problems with are occurring there. Uh, they, they're just being controlled at this situation. Um, have you ever been out there? Huh. No, Sam, I'm not really interested. I've never been to Burning Man either. Maybe you have, but I've no. been stuff that gets me. <laughs> uh, no, there, there are parts of my body I don't want uh, desert sand going into, so uh, I'm, I've been staying away from Burning Man, but my wife has been out there. Um, what did you think about uh, the Formula One race car uh, race that's coming to the Las Vegas Strip? That seemed pretty darn exciting. Oh my gosh, that is bigger than anything we've done. You know, the interesting thing they say when that comes to Las Vegas, you're going to know what real wealth is. They say that our airport is going to be filled with these personal jets and helicopters, and it brings the old uber rich from Europe over here. So it's going to be a, a logistics issue. It's more people watching people, I think, because the cars go so fast and they're you know going around the corners, you don't see them all that often. But it is something that um, I think will be exciting, and I think it'll, it'll, it'll stay in Las Vegas for a long time if it comes here. We're excited about it here. All right, let's take another break. More with John Lee when we come right back. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mindham with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first-class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard. We've had Chris Young. We've had Lee Bryce a couple times. We've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Mayor John Lee of North Las Vegas. He is running for governor. Um, I want to go back to what you were talking about at the beginning, which is uh, education. Um, the Education Association uh, withdrew their, their initiative petitions. Uh, the Secretary of State said they couldn't, um, uh, but the judge ruled that they could. And, um, and now the Secretary of State's office is objecting. What, what do you think about the idea of people being able to run initiative petitions and therefore having, you know, the ability, it's a nice way of, it's not a nice way of putting it, but basically being able to blackmail the legislature. What do you think about that? You know, it seems like all three branches of government somehow want to thwart the other one from moving forward. I don't know if they don't really talk to each other or have an idea of, of if they, I don't know how to say this, Sam, but sometimes you can look forward a little bit and cause yourself less problems if you look at what somebody else might look at the situation. I just know this. In, in Southern Nevada, I believe we need to break up the school district. I think we need 
one master school district that does transportation, food, building maintenance, everything like that. But we've got 42 schools in North Las Vegas. We could have our own school district here. It would be a lot closer to the people that are here. We could once again get professional development going for teachers again. So they're kind of excited about learning uh, and continuing on with their, their trade. And then, you know, we need to retain and recruit teachers. And I think that if we do a good job in North Las Vegas, teachers would want to come to our school district. And there'd be some competition that plays out there. So with this no competition, um, this let the federal government decide what's going to be happening everywhere. I think we're completely failing. I think Nevada needs to figure out what it wants to do to retain and make sure it educates its school children. I'm actually doing work, Sam, right now that we need 21st century job, people to work those 21st century jobs. We're not getting them. We're just teaching to the trade that's here, gaming, tourism, and hospitality. And um, we're going to get left behind or other people will come here and bring their children who are smarter and get those jobs. I'm not interested in that, Sam. I want all children to rise and have the opportunity in Nevada that I have. All right. Well, you didn't really answer my question about the blackmail thing, but we can hit that the next time you come on the program because you're always welcome here, sir. Thank you so much for doing this, as always, Mayor. My pleasure. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate you, bud. And we'll see you on the campaign trail. We'll be right back. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.